You gotta give credit to Sherwin-Williams for these straight-to-the-point color names. The code that we're going to crack today is SW7050, which belongs to a Sherwin-Williams color called Useful Gray. Coming in with an LRV of 59, this color falls into the mid-tone category, as it has enough in it to stand out as a color, but it's not going to overly darken a space either. In 2021, we're kind of over gray. Trust me, I can hear a lot of you right now. And I understand. But when it comes down to it, there are just so many directions in which gray can go. I find that people are growing tired of the colder cement grays that lack that cozy and welcoming warmth. Gray just feels tired in theory, but a big portion of it comes down to its execution, in my opinion, and also incorporating your decor into that gray to heighten the overall space. So where does useful gray fit in all of this? Turns out it's a pretty useful color, largely because of its warmth. Some may classify it as a grayish, but when I compare it to a lot of the other major mid-tone grays out there, useful gray does seem to take a few steps towards green and beige, so it's perhaps more of a greenage. Paint people trademarked. I mentioned earlier how you start to see more green when you compare it to other grays, so let's go ahead and do just that and show you where it sits. So if we put it next to a repose gray, they both have that slightly similar cool touch to them, but useful gray's added yellow warmth does give it that green touch I was mentioning earlier. And comparing their LRVs, they're nearly identical, so the depth is going to be very similar. You really start to notice a major difference when you put useful gray next to agreeable gray, which is just a touch lighter, but the real difference comes in that brown and red undertone, which makes it feel closer to taupe, rather than our newly patented greenage. Grenage. If you like my new word creation, smack that like button. How about that paint people vocab? What about trim colors? It would probably be a good idea to incorporate that warmth into your trim as well here, because that's what gives useful gray its fun edge. You could use some of the usual suspects like pure white or even polar bear, but I enjoy going even further with that warmth and opting for something like white tail. It certainly has quite a bit of yellow in it, but also it feels toned down with a touch of taupe to keep it from feeling overly reflective. The nice thing as well is useful gray works wonderfully with nearly any kind of natural wood trim as well. So if you really don't wanna paint your stained woodwork, you don't need to. Essentially either go pure white or any of the light warm leaning off whites out there. What color should you pair it with? The useful aspect of useful gray, <laughs> wow. I feel it comes from that ever so slight green touch. It's a pleasant green that feels warm and inviting and cozy, so it tends to coordinate really nicely with any kind of natural woods and definitely with more prominent greens as well. A color like Coastal Plain would look marvelous alongside it because it has that slightly sage, dusty quality and can add quite a bit of depth of color into your palette as well. But just because Useful Gray has that green touch doesn't mean you just need to stick with greens. You can also go for a much warmer caramel color like Totally Tan, which introduces some yellow and a bit more of that orange and brown combination, which I would probably use in smaller doses generally to help complement the green aspect of Useful Gray. Another direction you can take it in is a cooler color for a more moody look. It doesn't get much moodier than Attitude Gray, at least in regards to the name. At first, it kind of just looks like an earthy, slightly slight gray with a 20 LRV, but it also has enough of that teal touch to cool it down quite a bit. This one will definitely give you more of a contrasty look, and it might be an interesting choice for a connected bathroom or a dramatic dining room. But the all-important question is, where should you use useful gray? While not the most neutral color I've ever seen, it comes pretty close. Although I'm a huge fan of that slight green touch here, that can put some people off, especially those of you who favor the more purple leading undertones in your gray palette. I guess useful gray could also afford to be a touch lighter, which would make it even more of a universal main color, but I could still see useful gray used throughout an entire home. If you're still married to the gray color palette, but perhaps want to deviate a tiny bit into a warmer category of grays and rock some green age walls, give useful gray a go. If you'd rather have your grays be agreeable rather than useful, then watch our episode on Agreeable Gray right over here to see if it's a better fit for your color palette. You've gotta love the names.